Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the DAYSAC webinar of the 2025 initiative. Today is the first day of the seven days period of the DAYSAC week and we come together to join the wider group alignment in preparation for the great event in few days. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiatives coordination group. I now invite Claire from New Zealand, member of our group to lead us in alignment. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Yes, we welcome you to the WESAC Festival Gathering. WESAC is, um, as we all know, the spiritual high point of the year. This profoundly significant festival takes place at the exact time of the Taurus Solar Festival. During the seven days period around the festival, Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity come into potent and unified alignment. We're very um, blessed today to have Sergei from a very special um, place right near Mount Kailash, along with Tuya and Steve from um, the US. So I invite us all to close our eyes and take our place in the sacred circle. We come together today as we always do in the spirit of unity, rededicating ourselves to the task of service to humanity. Via our process of group sharing and meditation, we weave our continents together with stories of living discipleship. And today we prepare our collective chalice to receive the Waysak blessing. As part of our alignment today, let us share in a brief visualization that will lead us into the Wesak Valley. I'm drawing from the Wesak legend as told by Alice Bailey. There is a green valley high in the foothills of the Himalayan Tibet ranges that is bottle shaped and surrounded by towering mountains. At the north end of this valley, there is a narrow opening in the mountain ranges where a flat rock rests. The southern part of the valley is wide and round. There are no trees or shrubs in the valley, only a coarse grass. At the time leading up to the full moon of Taurus, which is now, Pilgrims from the surrounding districts begin to gather. The holy men and lamas find their way into the valley and fill the southern and middle parts, leaving the northeastern end relatively free. It is there that a great group of great wisdom beings, the Earth's guardians, gather together. This group of enlightened ones are the main participants in the Wesak festival. They arrange themselves in the northeastern end of the valley in concentric circles. In front of the rock, where a large crystal bowl of water is placed. The Christ is standing there. Gathered throughout the valley are masters and addicts and other planetary light workers. Some are present in their physical bodies while others are in their spirit bodies. We too take our place. Stillness settles down upon the crowd. All present turn towards the northeast. The group masters and their disciples of all ranks take up symbolic positions. 
they form on the floor of the valley such significant symbols as the five-pointed star, the Christ standing at its highest point, the triangle with the Christ at the apex, the cross and other geometric formations, each of which has deep and potent meaning. Throughout the valley, there can be felt a potent vibration. The chanting and rhythmic weaving of sound grow stronger. All the participants and the watching crowd raise their eyes towards the sky in the direction of the narrow part of the valley. We too are in that place of waiting, that place of expectancy. Holding this alignment and the energy of anticipation, we say the affirmation of the will together. In the center of the will of God we stand. Naught shall deflect our will from his. We implement that will by love. We turn towards the field of service. We, the triangle divine, Work out that will within the square and serve our fellow men. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, everyone. In preparation for today's gatherings, we offered the community to reflect on the question of how we build our discipleship capacity. How can we bring the inspiration of the higher vision to practical service? And we invited our panelists today, Steve Nation, Tuya Robbins and Sergei Smirnov to meditate on this question and come together today to share with us their inspirations and to meditate together as one group. So I invite Steve to open our sharing today. So Steve, if you could unmute yourself. Good day. Hi. Thank you, Sasha. And um, thank you, Claire, for that wonderful reminder of the, it's an incredible image of that event that takes place. And to imagine that now on the etheric plane and physically, Sergei is in um, the Mount Kailash region physically, that all of the sort of truly deep esoteric workers in the world are assembling in this figurative and literal place in this valley. Waisak is the high point of the spiritual year. And it's a time when human consciousness is flooded with light and forces of enlightenment. The spiritual keynote for meditation refers to how, how we see you know, as human beings, how we see, what we see, how we look. To the transition from seeing the world through the two eyes of the incarnated personal self, to seeing the world through the single spiritual eye of revelation. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is light. 
That's the journey that every one on the discipleship path, the inner journey that all of us are on. A journey towards a time when we will see, when the eye of revelation will be opened as a result of lifetimes of labor and when we see that all is light. When we look out on the world today, many see the rising tide of materialism and polarization in societies. And for so many, this brings great sadness and despair at what the two eyes reveal. Yet often what we fail to see is the effect that this rising tide of materialism is having on millions of intelligent, spiritually centered, sensitive individuals who are being pushed to go deeper, to understand how they can possibly be of use at this time and how they can also stand steady and be true to themselves. And this whole movement of millions of people represents a significant movement for humanity onto the discipleship path. So, you know, a meeting today and this webinar and all the other meetings that will be going on, the wonderful, I heard it was a wonderful gathering at Phoenix that the Seven Ray Institute have just completed. The, I don't know if any of you heard today, the earlier today, the meditation that Michael Linfield led from um, the community centers gathering at Hollyhock. Wonderful meditation. Um, and then this weekend coming up, the Arcane School starts the first of its series of conferences in New York. For me, the transformation that's taking place behind the scenes in humanity is symbolized by the fact that tomorrow, which in, is the first, if you look at the five-day cycle of approach to the full moon, tomorrow is the first of the five days. And there's a synchronicity in the fact that tomorrow will be observed by the United Nations and by countless groups, many scientists around the world, as the International Day of Light. Seems that's a pretty terrific first day in the five-day cycle. And among other things, the Dark Skies for All project will be highlighted and efforts will be made to encourage people to notice and care about the starry worlds and how the starry worlds might speak to us scientifically, mythically, and spiritually. Another symbol of synchronicity of humanity's turning to the light is that the United Nations will be observing Vesak Day, Vesak on, on this Friday. So it's in this environment of human thoughts, desires, and aspirations, when humanity is in a sense in turmoil, and when values and morality are deeply stirred without settled answers, we can figuratively stand with all who make up the world esoteric group holding the question how can all the deep thinkers in humanity at this time all those who are reaching into realms of loving thought how can they develop and mature their discipleship capacities it's such a big question is probably way beyond our ability to even begin to see. Certainly, it's beyond our capacity to see how, because there are a myriad ways, a myriad ways to take the next step on the path into the self and into the revelation of the mysteries that can be found in the deepest self. But we can usefully begin to approach this question by looking privately and almost secretly at our own discipleship lives. Asking what steps lie immediately ahead of us. 
what actions can we take that might improve our ability to see the next step ahead? How can we shine some light onto the steps that we might take for the next year to purify, focus and concentrate our analytical lower mind, that human mind that we know so well, that we're already engaged with working with, transforming, cleansing, quietening, but still penetrating with analysis. How we can develop the ability to think as the soul thinks. What can we do to help the mind move into the level of the son of mind, the thinking of the soul? And then, what steps can we take privately, interiorly, secretly, that will help us penetrate into the abstract mind? And as all these, these three levels of thought begin to be exercised, and we consciously build capacity to develop the mind as a service, to humanity. We can begin to work with the illuminating, clarifying impressions from the intuition. Seeing through the single eye of vision requires that we work, we labor at building capacity in all these areas of mind. And in a sense, if we think of every single sort of esoteric initiative at the heart of the Buddhist movement, at the heart of the Sufi movement, at the heart of the Steiner Anthroposophy movement, it's a huge movement now, at the heart of the Ageless Wisdom community drawing its teachings from Alice Bailey. In, at the center of all of these groups, we should imagine a vitality and a freshness in taking steps to deepen and build this alignment with the levels of mind. This question how we as an Ageless Wisdom community can develop our capacity so that we can manifest the vision for a better world is an intriguing one. And my own view is that the question can only be answered by each one of us individually. It's such a deeply private question because to develop capacity is a verb. It's about will and action. And only I, only you and I, each one of us, can answer what I need to do and what I am able to do, what is relevant to me who I am, the little one who I am. What can I do to enhance my ability to serve and to be useful? at this critical initiatory time in human affairs. There's a need to step up whatever training program we each are on. That's really about developing capacity to take the training we need. However, each one of us are consciously approaching this question of focus on meditation, study and service. Humanity's calling us to deepen each one of those levels. DK presents a vision of the work that each one of us needs to undertake to build the alignment between the three levels of mind. It requires an ordered, organized, careful, plodding, ongoing plan of labor. And as DK said in his final words to Alice Bailey, as we all know, those words were, work, my brothers. In today's world, when instant gratification is constantly sought, this can seem such a daunting, unappealing, unexciting, and even uncreative. That's how immersed the world has become in desire. Yet esoteric labor, carried out systematically over years and decades, is a path to joy. And it can only really be carried out if it brings with us increasing experience 
and ability to radiate selfless joy. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Let's have a moment of silence and take it deep within. Dear Tuya, good morning. I believe it's still morning in Arizona. Good, good morning to everybody. <laughs> and uh, we will try now to put my screen right. Yes, just a second. I will make you a presenter. And while we are doing that, thank you, Steve. It was so beautiful again such a gift to have that kind of brother among us so do you see my screen now yes okay see. right so uh, while we are while we are going towards the uh, Vesak and the powerful energies uh, uh, alexander was asking from me maybe i would be talking something what i was um having in my presentation in our conference here. So when we think about the from vision to capacity, it is the one of the very uh, crucial questions for us that how do we come real in the work? When we think uh, about the new group of servers where in which we are concerned about is that the to remember that where there is no vision, people perish. And that is the responsibility of uh, new group of world servers to keep on vision alive. And how that vision is kept alive is a big question for us. It's related to the living Christ within us, the spirit of the Holy Spirit, if we may so say as well. So um, these questions, again, how to become more real in the work. We can always question that from ourselves. And I'm sure when we question that, I'm sure that we will have uh, all of us inspirational ideas about that in relationship to our own self. Uh, so, even though we are preparing ourselves to the Vesak festival, I'm talking uh, about the Pentecost because it is so much related to this time and maybe we have not been considering that so much. So, Pentecost is coming 50 days after Easter. Easter is for us something what may be related in our minds to things what can be left into the past and start to really think about what Easter is telling us individually as a group worldwide. We are talking about a matter within ourselves which has to be transformed into livingness. And that is a, a concept as crowning of Mary. And I was thinking, I will put something about the Holy Spirit that we could contemplate what, what we are actually hearing. This is coming by DK. The rays are the seven emanations from the seven spirits before the throne of God. In a certain sense, it could be said that these seven great and living energies are in their totality. 
the etheric vehicle of the planetary logos. The evolutionary processes can equally well be stated to be those of eliminating the physical substance lying between the dense physical body and the astral sentient body and substituting substance of the four highest planes, the four cosmic ethers. Physically speaking, it is this etheric substitution which enables a man successively to take the five initiations. So what does tell to us is that that is one of the things when we become more real, that these higher qualities of the higher etheric planes are substituting the lower qualities in our lower etheric planes. And that is related to the mystery of the Holy Spirit or the Mother, if we want to say so. The Holy Spirit um, is some sense when we think about initiations, these first two initiations which are set that they are the initiations on the threshold. So that's why we cannot just uh, overlook the Holy Spirit, what it is. The Holy Spirit, the one who overshadows and who implants the germ of life in the waiting, a quiescent virgin mother. It's the attitude within us. So we, we look forward into the higher realms of life but at the same time how this change within us in matter sense happens we have this great triangle of study service and meditation these are of course one of those means but let us look a little bit what happens in disciples during the pentecost the Bible, it is said, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. We can all question what are those tongues. In Pentecost, um, the story of the upper chamber in which the disciples met and ar arrived at the true recognition of the risen Christ and at a perfect and complete understanding of each other, in spite of the symbolic diversity of tongues. They had a touch of prevision, of prophetic insight, and foresaw a little of the wonder of the Aquarian Age. So when we are now also in the time, the sacred time of the Vesak, and these 50 days from the uh, Easter is um, within us, Christ was asking them to follow a man who is carrying the water pitcher. And the water is so important element in the Vesak festival. The Christ himself holds that chalice and the Buddha blesses, and it is said that all the waters during the Vesak time are blessed. Well, it is also the waters within us. Ashra plane is needed to be sanctified and as we were also talking about the Holy Spirit which uh, like substitute the Holy Spirit with, which makes everything holy substitutes these waters within us. Pentecost related to the strongly second decree which was the initiation um, also with talking about Ali's and, and the group uh, that uh, this initiation was very important. It was also the initiation important in the group of uh, Christ. So uh, whatever is the next step initiatory ways for us, anyway, the Pentecost and the second initiation is important to consider. Humanity preparing the first initiation and Holy Spirit is that which is also overshadowing in that initiation. Again, DK says, the festival of Easter and the Feast of Pentecost will be the two outstanding days of the religious year. 
Pentecost is, as you must well know, the symbol of writing the relations in which all men and nations will understand each other, and through speaking in many and diverse languages will know only one spiritual speech. Maybe we will think about that. Contemplate what is that one spiritual speech that we are all to learn. The fact of the resurrection will be demonstrated during the next few centuries and the living Christ will walk among men, lead them onward towards the Mount of Ascension. The Pentecost will become truth. All men will come under the tide of inspiration from on high and they and though they may speak with many tongues, they will all understand each other. And I think that is one big question for us. That we have come from all directions, hopefully infused by the higher energies, work together blindly, but we should not work blindly anymore. As the group, we should realize this year that this is a big year of internal realization. Why we are here together and what we are all to do. And this thing to individually contemplate as Steve was putting, what is the next step? That is one of the most important things for us to contemplate always to become really real in the world. What is the next step in my own uh, soul dharma? What is the step, next step to us? And these numbers are very strong this year. When we think that 100 years ago, Ali started her work with Master DK. So there is really something going on in this group who is um, uh, brought together under the guidance of the DK. And it does not take anything away from being related to any other group because we are just in one huge, great work. But good to contemplate. When we think about Holy Spirit in the life of disciples, it's really important to listen what Christ has said. Uh, TK says, this event does not portray the triumph of Orthodox Christianity, but signifies the universal dissemination of the Christ consciousness throughout all time in the heart of every human being. And now when we are living this time, 50 days from Easter, he was asking the disciples go into the upper chamber and stay there and wait when the Holy Spirit would descend, which was marking the moment of uh, baptism in Jordan for uh, in fire, by fire, and then the disciples were ready to go into the world. So it signifies, signifies all, also for all of us when the Pentecost time is. That kind of moment that we really from the Easter through Vesak time, these 50 days, we should turn within and contemplate these deep essential things. We are in the living life. We are not in any dogmas. The, the teaching will inspire us, but the livingness of life has to baptize us. Those living flames will come in their mysterious ways. As it was said, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. We can think about this one place as a collective meditative place, wherever we are on the planet. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. 
and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So we are now living the sacred time of the 50 days to the Pentecost, to the living flames which are available for all of us. I just want to quote that to the end, what Christ says, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. And that means that when they were gathered together in upper chamber, they were supposed to be preparing themselves for this moment. That the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Christ said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed and them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So this is where I am ending that we are supposed to light the way. We are supposed to bring light to all things, to bring understanding, to bring the union and the spirit, the livingness of this wonderful life that we all are living by sharing, coming together as the Pentecost is like the continuation of this Holy Communion, the Supper, which in one day, uh, TK talks about one day, it will be shared by the living Christ among us. So the only, the uh, every communion that we come together is the preparation for that great communion, the brotherhood, living brotherhood, sisterhood on earth. So thank you. Thank you, Tuya. Thank you. It's a beautiful image now on the screen. So I say, let's have a minute of deeper reflection. Sergey, good evening, or it's late night in Tibet now. So please unmute yourself and share with us your inspirations. Sergey, there is a, a unmute button um, on the control panel. Yes. Okay. It is the best theme to talk about how to make our vision into service. And uh, Tuya's presentation and Steve's presentation and uh, my presentation is one millionth of what should be said around the world about this Trans transition from sixth ray to the seventh ray. 
from mystical mystical way of living to the occult way of living. Uh, what I want to say, because of this mountain kalash which uh, inspires all people who are coming here and changing, first of all, their etheric equipment and you feel you feel ether much better here than everywhere else but you see i was not too long ago near shasta in california and uh, <laughs> it is a little sister of kalash and um, it was very interesting to compare the influence of shasta surroundings on our etheric bodies and the influence of kalash on our etheric bodies so the topic of every consciousness and fullness due to a failure in the third chain and the unfortunate events that happened there humanity has a great difficulty using the high etheric energy distributed through the energy centers or chakras it mostly uses the energy of physical cells squeezing it out by different means mainly by use of fear or by dictatorship of thought forms a disciple should learn to master the first second third and fourth ethers so that he, so that he could understand the real nature of individuals groups kingdoms of nature as soon as this happens a disciple starts to demonstrate the beginning of omniscience and when this is developed a disciple can be omnipresent he can move around freely in his etheric body. One should realize that humanity lives using the lower ether of its physical body cells. This carries in itself all the beginnings of slavery, attachment, and egotism. When a person learns to use the higher group level, group ethers, the freedom of his etheric expression has to do with the group freedom. If a person learns to use the etheric centers of humanity and to perform at the level of the first, second, third, fourth ethers of humanity, then he acquires freedom of the, at the level of humanity. And if a disciple learns to use the ethers of hierarchy, then he achieves the state of the bird that can fly it freely. And this is the goal of a human being. Therefore, it is very important to master high ethers planes. Disciples are just beginning to understand group, group energies and to practically use them. But these are key to the group feeling, group consciousness, and group work. This is what awaits humanity through the disciples, and then this ability will come. And then this ability will come to the intelligentsia, and afterwards to the ordinary people. For example, uh, if I would talk uh, to Krishnaids, I will visualize my group centers, the centers of my group, and will connect with a group, new group of world servers. And if I'm talking with them through centers of new group of world servers, the angels which are uh, go govern these centers will transmit my ideas to centers of Krishnaids much better than I can do it personally myself.
uh, very important when you begin to work with etheric energy and you will have uh, revelation about this work you should remember the very strict words of Jean Cou that you that you should not do compilation on etheric work because that gives the ignorant people possibility to harm themselves people who are around and the whole evolution evolutionary way and uh, i want to explain to to add in this case that uh, seventh ray uh, rules the etheric plane of physical plane and uh, 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 three lower subplanes of physical plane uh, solid uh, fluid and uh, fiery they are ruled by third ray and this uh, plane is ruled by two uh, laws law of sacrifice and law of death if you are working with etheric planes you are under the law of sacrifice and if you use your physical cells you are under the law of death that's why it's so difficult to talk to people uh, about sacrifice they are not ready to use so difficult they gather their etheric energy etheric energy from their cells so they could not uh, share with others they use this uh, energy only for themselves and cells are very they are on stage of totally egoist, egoistic development that's why when you are using uh, free etheric energy from fourth to first level you can sacrifice but if you use your personal energy you, your sacrifice will always need uh, something something back Итак, second part the festival week strategy what happens during the festival week the masters of wisdom use this energy of the greater capricorn the power of which is unimaginable for us to broaden our consciousness to maximum possible so in our current state they cannot plan for what will happen then we can jot down the problems that we want to solve yet we have to keep in mind that during this week or really nine days more problems will be solved than we can imagine what we should do then when the festival week starts at for new york for example at 8 a.m on december 20th then sun uh, crosses the border near japan a disciple or a group of disciples depending on what they want to meditate on unite in light goodwill and if they can in the will to good visualize the group centers and ask a question what is the most important thing to meditate now they will get an answer immediately so clearly and precisely like never before in their lives their intuition will work instantly they will become intuitive so let's so let's say they worked like this for an hour after then after a while they repeat a group alignment visualize group centers and ask and now what we should be should we do after these meditations the level of the disciples consciousness will increase immensely so it is impossible to guess in advance what we achieve even in a single day so there will be steps there will be uh, stair and 
every stair you cannot you cannot visualize before that's why you should ask yourself what to do at this moment maybe once in an hour maybe once every couple of hours and certainly no less than three or four times a day we should raise our questions sometimes a revelation is huge and can last for hours or a whole day and even night it propels a disciple's consciousness into the far reaches he never could imagine then he can to ask from that high place and now what do i have to do so by december 29 we will travel incredibly far and so in order to remember the revelation you should receive when you return to your usual state of conscience you have to write all of your revelations down during the festival week you will forget i uh, did it um, four times already uh, for festival weeks and if you will not if you wouldn't uh, write your revelations you will never go you will never catch this idea once more secondly you should distribute distribute this group energy over next seven years because you will be working with your ordinary consciousness with your intu intuitive consciousness with your will consciousness later in 2023 we will work with nine year cycle 2023 2032 meditating plan for the next nine years in 2025 we will join the hierarchical meditation on the plan for the next hundred years in 2125 so during the festival week this december please mark these important forthcoming meditative opportunities as you visualize work during the next seven years and ask the higher powers to get you ready for them at every level at karmic level at mundane mundane level at the level of our circumstances at the level of our soul and will Third, we should keep in mind we should keep it in mind that perfection brings imperfection to the surface you have gone so high your karmic circumstances will be activated too you will bring together the high energies of your of the revelation and vision to the level of karmic forces as well yet the disciples have very little experience working with karmic forces it's pioneer work our regular experience is often tragic and sad so we have to be prepared to bring together the high energies and the black backlash that comes as a reaction of your rapid advancement during the festival week we have to be ready to anchor the higher vision on the plane of mundane life the higher energies pull us upwards the lower forces pull us downwards the sum total of positive energies and negative forces will equal your opportunity to evolve over the next seven years you can also visualize the distance between year 2019 and 2026 back and forth year after year meditating on what may happen during each of these years and you will be receiving ever clearer and more precise answers oh it's a west thing i wrote a paper no maybe sasha will uh, will 
put it down uh, in the papers which are connected to this our meeting. I'm all. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, yes, um, you can find uh, Sergey's presentation in the handout section of the control panel and can download it. So let's have a minute to reflect. So let's now prepare ourselves for meditation and I invite Steve to lead us in our group meditation. Thank you, Sasha. So we'll work with the Meditation, letting in the light. This outline begins with a um, with a keynote to the full moon approach to the hierarchy. He who faces the light and stands within its radiance is blinded to the issues of the world of men. He passes on the lighted way to the great center of absorption. But he who feels the urge to pass that way, yet loves his brother on the darkened path, revolves upon the pedestal of light and turns the other way. He faces towards the dark and then the seven points of light within himself transmit the outward streaming light and lo the face of those upon the darkened way receives that light for them the way is not so dark behind the warriors twixt the light and dark blazes the light of hierarchy So let's bring ourselves together into a fusion, a fusion as a group integrated within the heart center of the group of world servers, mediating between hierarchy and humanity. group fusion, one group of all esoteric workers.
and sound together the, this mantra of group fusion. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. Use the imagination to project a line of lighted energy penetrating into the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kamara. And with the extend that line towards the Christ, the heart of hierarchy. Now they extend the line of light toward Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known, the center of peaceful, silent will. Hold the contemplative mind of the group open to the extraplanetary energy streaming into Shambhala and radiated through hierarchy. Using the creative imagination, endeavor to see the three planetary centers, Shambhala, hierarchy, humanity, coming into alignment and interplay. See this happening.
meditation. Reflect on the seed thought for Taurus. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is light. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is light. Precipitation. Visualize the energies of light, love, and the will to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on earth and prepared physical plane centers through which the plan is manifesting. Use the sixfold progression of divine love as the sequence of energy precipitation. See these energies flowing, Shambhala, Hierarchy, the Christ, the group of world servants, the people of goodwill in every part of the world, and the myriad physical centers of distribution. Now in the lower interlude, refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram. And together sound the affirmation. In the center of all love I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, 
through my group and throughout the world. Visualize this downpouring spiritual inflow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy, streaming into humanity through the prepared channel. And consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher, the Christ. distribution. We sound together the great invocation, visualizing the outpouring of light and love and power from the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets. London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo, irradiating the consciousness of the entire human race. And so together as one group, we sound the word. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you, Sasha. Over to you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone, for this meditative service. Let's open now our circle for sharing. And I invite Tuya, Steve, Sergey, and everyone in this circle to share any thoughts, that impressions that came through this sharing and through this meditation. Definitely there will be more coming in the next seven days of the Vesak. We have now about 10 minutes to hear each other, or we can just continue keeping silence. So if you would like to uh, say anything, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. And our panelists, you have control over your microphones, so please feel free to step in. Okay, this is Tuya. Few thoughts, uh, uh, first few very practical thoughts. Uh, my huge gratitude to the fifth ray ashram. Do you hear me? Because I have a lot of background sound. Yes, we can hear you, but there, yeah, there's some, some background sound. Okay, so. Um, huge gratitude to the fifth ray ashram that this is possible to be done it is such a privilege to be together uh, and sergey there in the hot spot is fantastic sure. and and then uh, one thing about um, what came to my mind was uh, again about the power of silence that how it is unifying the field it's not only unifying us but the, really it pours in into the ethers and in that sense i can imagine the ripples going around in environment and bringing this holy spirit changing the monday in holy rhythm which is uh, which is so important to start to practice that kind of uh, uh, and realize this immediate change what happens and then the other thing um, when Sergei is there in the hot spot in, about that that what DK says that in one point is it now that point happening uh, but that the new group of service will take the um, position of Buddha in the Vesak festival. So I was reflecting about that, that when it might happen, has it happening? Uh, is this those signs it is uh, happening, what I think it is really. But those those um, like higher responsibilities that we have in the group, not only that one individually have, but we have in the group. And this great energy of love when Steve was doing this meditation. So thank you so much. It is just incredibly uplifting. We are truly blessed with this opportunity and to connect via ethers and great gratitude to everyone.
Claire, are the are these slides that we're seeing? Are they from you, Claire? You're not. You're probably muted. They are magnificent. Thank you so much. Whoever's produced them. Thank you, Steve. Beautiful. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, in participating in participation in such a beautiful meditation and uh, your presentation. We are very, very <laughs> insp insp inspirational. <laughs> Maybe sometime we will gather to we will gather in this place, all <laughs> our group, <laughs> not only mentally but in physically. In phys okay, twenty five. Let us see each <laughs> other there. <laughs> I've been thinking, Sergey, that as we do this, the fact that you and the group. Uh, there means that we all do have a physical embodiment. So in a sense, like in real time, you know, human beings, we live in time and space. Our work is combining the timeless with the time. The fact that you are physically present in the space of that sacred mountain um, means that in a sense, we are all there. And for that, I'm really grateful. That makes this particular webinar most unusual. And I think the, of all of the, the names, the, the 78 of the 101 Max, <laughs> of all of the names, there are people from many parts of the planet. That's a sort of, that's a great thing. Yes, it is a, such an uplifting, inspiring and strengthening thing. I will now unmute Katya. Just a second. Yes, um, I really want to thank you all and us all. And as I see those hearts flying up, it's. Um, very symbolic. It is a great privilege to have that physical anchor of um, you guys, you know, Sergei in the group, and Nicholas, and um, having that link. Thank you, and uh, to you, and Steve, and to you, and and everybody who is now part of this work and connection. And that great sense of those centers of new group, so vibrant now, as, as those hearts that are flying up. And um, thank you. Now, that is all. I want to give thanks. I want to give thanks to workers in IT, in IT field that made possible our connection through air. <laughs> thanks them very much. Here, here. The technology, Davis. <laughs> It's rather beautiful, the technology davers and the human beings <laughs> who are pioneering, working together. It's good collaboration. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's a good example you know, coming from vision to capacity. 
because mm. this was envisioned long ago, and there were those disciples who came and incapacitated that vision. You know, uh, near Kailas, there was <clears throat> present is so visible that you cannot avoid it. They're so powerful here that you should be very careful that, <laughs> that they are invisible, but, they are, but the results are very visible. Wonderful. And I want to say that there are other devas who are um, supporting great Chinese firewall that would uh, normally block this type of connection. But yeah, I'm grateful to those uh, people who helped to get, uh, go around it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for telling us that, Sasha. That's good. Yeah, thank you. I, I a little a note for Sergei there. Uh, when we went in 2000 to Vesak Valley, and when you walk this, uh, you, don't, uh, you have not yet started the real official Kora, but you enter into the valley itself, there came a lark who was, who was singing. And there is a story about the lark that uh, when God was creating the world and uh, there was left one little bird who didn't have yet job, and this little bird was so um, sad about it. And then uh, because of this uh, sadness, uh, he didn't do not he didn't know what to do, but he started to fly higher and higher. And the more higher he flew, the more happy he became and the more grateful and he started to sing. And so God said, so whenever you hear the lark, ascending and singing he is singing for the gratitude of god mm -hmm. so maybe Sergei, you hear the lark singing there when you go go into the vesak valley mm. thank you everyone so now it's time mm that we allocate for our connection is now come to the end. So I invite as always to keep us our connection and uh, especially this week and when we will bring our focus to the sacred valley in our meditation. And all this year as we prepare for the festival week, strengthening our hands standing together as one group. Sasha, can I just remind about the silence on every yes, Thursday? Yes. yes, I just would like to remind us uh, to keep the silence 10 minutes before, five on each time zone for strengthening the new global servers and blessing the coming festival. Thank you. To, uh, it's an ongoing effort to unify our group unity. So thank you. And I want now to announce our um, coming webinars. And um, Claire, I forgot to uh, ask you to include the announcement about our new moon webinar so i will for a few seconds will show my screen to uh, say about coming new moon webinar on june 4th we invite you to come together in a circle to meditate on strengthening the thought form of the sustainable development goal number 13 climate action and please Bring your focus to this goal in your daily meditation, even if it's just for a few seconds, but that would help us to build the group focus on this goal as we uh, work together. And um, our next full moon, and Claire, I give this screen control back to you that you could show the slide with the announcement of the um, 
forthcoming full moon webinar. It's um, Gemini full moon and uh, we will have a two day conference or gathering uh, where we invite you to and invite all community to meditate on the topic of right relations. And that's the topic of all our um, webinars and the full moon uh, of uh, full moons of the mutable cross. So um, this high point of Gemini full moon, we will reflect together how we come from vision through capacity to practical service manifest in right relationship. Thank you. Claire, do we have any mantra to close the gathering today? How about this one? Beautiful. Would you lead us in it, please? Sure. The affirmation of love. In the center of all love we stand. From that center, we the soul will move, will outward move. From that center, we the ones who serve will work. May the love of the divine self be shared abroad in my heart, in my group, and throughout the world. Thank you, everyone. And may our blessings, our vessels be filled through this very sad period. Blessings to you all.